What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great hump day tomorrow night. Oh, my goodness. It will be the very first uh, regular pre uh, preseason game, okay? Uh, not the Hall of Fame game, but this is the first week uh, with the New York Stinking Giants playing. And, and, and Hey, look, it's a game. It's a game. Well, it's a practice game. We're talking about a practice game. Not not a real game, but a practice game. But it kicks off a weekend full of football as we sit here 29 days, 57 minutes, and 20 seconds away from kickoff of the 2029 season. And for our Cowboys... We'll be playing Saturday against the Denver Broncos. We're going to have two practices uh, with the Broncos before the game tomorrow and um, Friday. And we'll see, you know, how the rubber hits the road on that. Um, at the moment, um, Anthony Barr is still on the pup list. They're trying to ramp him up bit by bit, you know, get him into shape before there's no physical injury. It's just they don't want to go too quick, too soon, and throw him into the fire and end up having an injury. Um, also, too, we have um, – J. Ron Curse, a little bit of back soreness. He was held out of practice. And the Cowboys actually had a walkthrough scrimmage again today. Uh, the kinder, gentler NFL, basically they are no helmets except for the quarterbacks and uh, in shorts and stuff. And basically they're doing a light jog through practice and getting ready to actually play. So that's where we are with our Dallas Cowboys. Now, interesting take here. Now, um, shout out to my man, DMV. DMV, definitely check out his uh, work because he does some great work and stuff. It's just hard to get traction because there's so many of us out here, um, and everybody does a good job. It's a matter of finding out who you really like and stuff. But he has an interesting theory about the Cowboys' offense, and I believe the Cowboys' offense. Everybody keeps saying the Cowboys' offense is going to take a major step back, but I can go back to 2014, and I can say um, – in that offseason, our Dallas Cowboys defense lost Jason Hatcher with 11 sacks. We lost Demarcus Ware, you know, perennial pro bowler, and we lost Sean Lee in the first day of OTAs. We lost three starters on our defense, three, the best three starters on our defense. That was 32nd in the NFL. Somehow that defense went from 32nd to 19th, but you would have thought they would have gotten worse because they ended up getting rid of stars. So that brings me back to this year. You know, everybody says the Cowboys offense is going to be lacking without Amari Cooper. I'm not trashing Amari Cooper. Don't, don't think that I am. But there were certain times that we have gone through where we've talked about Amari Cooper checking out. And I can honestly say that some of those games going down the stretch after COVID, it seemed like Amari Cooper was kind of Raider-esque when it seemed like he had checked out. I don't know if there were other things that were going on in the locker room or with Jerry Jones and so on, but it just did not seem like it was a great situation. But maybe, just maybe, there was a play here. Now, we can all say that we gave him up for too little. We should have gotten more than what we did, but, you know, that's water under the bridge right now. Um, hearing that the Eagles are hoping to trade uh, Regular, uh, uh, Regar, former first-round draft pick, and Philly 500's like, you know, a six- or seven-round pick. You know, I got to get more than that. If they somehow get fifth for a fifth for Regar, then, yeah, we should definitely burn down the place because that would be freaking ridiculous. But anyway, um. We should have tried to get more for him, but the Cowboys, you know, we let go of DeMarcus Ware for nothing. We let go of Des Bryant for nothing, you know, so that's what the Cowboys do. But it may be not so much about Amari Cooper as it was about the faith of the guys that they had underneath it there. Semi Fioco. Semi, the last couple of days, in fact, they said yesterday was probably Semi's best practice. Semi all of a sudden seems to be a great target. For Dak, you know, we also have Jalen Tolbert. Jalen Tolbert, I'm going to tell you, Jalen Tolbert is looking good. Him and Dak are becoming a thing. So you start looking at that. And then, of course, eventually we end up getting our man back um, from the knee injury. But also even undrafted rookie Richmond, who seems to be the most improved player in practice, that maybe 
just maybe the Cowboys aren't in bad a shape as everybody thinks. Now, do they have experience? No. No, no, they don't. They don't have experience. We get that. But you know what? Micah Parsons didn't have experience in the NFL. In fact, Micah Parsons didn't play the year before because he sat out because of COVID. And so as we start looking at this, the biggest thing that you can actually say that will be the benefit for the Dallas Cowboys is the fact that Dak Prescott is throwing dimes. Dak Prescott is laying it in the basket. In fact, I saw Dak Prescott the last day I was there from midfield throwing a football up on the sidelines right into a trash can. And Dak Prescott seems to be dialed in. I mean, and when you got a quarterback that's dialed in, and if, like Dalton Schultz said, that, you know, hey, we're going to run the ball. We are going to run the football. And if they are able to run the football, you don't necessarily have to have the best wide receivers in football. And I think what you're going to see this year is a change a bit in philosophy, or maybe not really a change in philosophy, although when you think about Jason Garrett, Scott Linehan, and those offenses, the thing that they really relied on was actually a lot of the running game. But I think the Cowboys will be a more balanced offense. If we can get the running game going um, and end up distributing the ball all over the place, because ultimately you don't want to have Zeke Elliott trying to rush for 2,000 yards. Not that I think it's possible now. You don't necessarily want one receiver that's going for 2,000 yards or 18, 1,700 yards and things like that. You want to be able to distribute the ball so that way teams will have to cover the whole field. Understand, you want them to have to cover the whole field and respect guys because, you know, ultimately sometimes you're going to have a guy who's going to have you know, a great game. You know, and, and it's a better matchup for uh, C.D. Lamb against somebody. Other games, it might be a better matchup for Jalen Tolbert against somebody. Other games, it may be better that we end up just running the rock right down their throats. And you want to be good at all of those things. Now, I will say this much. One of the things about the Cowboys that, um, as I look at last year, that I can't honestly say I know what it was is, what is our identity? What is our bread and butter when all else fails that we know that we can do without a problem? I don't know what that was last year. I honestly don't. And I'm hoping that that will be that we have a power running game and off of that power running game that we are able to play action, 12 personnel, be able to really truly um, – do some great things off of the run game. But everything starts down in the trenches with the running backs. And maybe, just maybe, the Cowboys will end up being right about letting Amari Cooper go. It's now time to let the rubber hit the road and see what we may. And I'm happy about the guys. I'm, I'm okay with the people we have. I have concerns, of course, with uh, Money Maher coming back as our kicker, but I feel better than the two guys we had here. Um, I worry about our backups on the offensive line. You know, I'm hoping that that's not going to end up being our Achilles heel. Um, but I feel great about my quarterback. I feel great about my defensive line and the depth on there. I feel good about a lot of things. But, you know, it's football. It's one of those things that you have to go out and you actually have to play the games. Now, listen to my, my, my son there, Philly 500. He honestly believes that the Eagles are better in every category, at every position other than quarterback. All right, Philly, you got no excuses, buddy. You got no excuses. All right, I will catch you guys later at the Fireside Chat. And as always, I appreciate you. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't Hurts. handle the truth. Hurts. The pass. Throws. Pick. Horrible pass. Oh, my God.